went through the wood and for a glade. When I look down, no, that's it. We started from so I can fix it here one time. When you want to put the bomb, so I can just take it down. Then sings my soul. How great the work! How great the work! Then sings my soul. Then shame to die. I scarce can take it in. That on the cross. Then sings my soul. How great thou art! How great thou art! Then sings my soul. When Christ shall come. With shouts of acclamation, and take me home. Then I shall bow in humble adoration. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our sister Pearl that she may share in Christ's victory. And let us pray for ourselves that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain fate that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead. The first fruits of all who have fallen asleep grant that through this mystery, your servant Pearl who has gone to her rest in Christ may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
please be seated as we will now have the eulogy. Good afternoon, everyone. This is the eulogy of Pearl Fira Rodney. A famous writer once said, we make a and daughter of the late Malvina Redney and Donald Anthony. Auntie Pearl lived in Orpooch, while in her adulthood, where she also had a one and only child role. She had to struggle to raise Rawls as a single mother. They later moved to Pine Avenue, San Grande, where she eventually passed. Auntie Pearl attended the North Orpooch Government Primary School, where she then wrote her school living examination, where she excelled. She did not have an easy living, especially in her early years and early adulthood, but as we could see, that upbringing is what molded her into the person we knew and loved. And so, worked at the Ministry of Work office in Wycliffe and Grandi. Even though she was hired as maintenance staff, everybody within that office would contest that she was also the clerical worker, assistant, checker, checker, foreman, manager, and supervisor. I am convinced Auntie Pearl was very upset to retire, not because she didn't want to rest, but because she would miss working her work family. Any office party, Christmas party, co-worker birthday, office, cookout, she was head and head, and as we will say, chef, cook, and bottle washer. Auntie Pearl was a devoted mother, Grandmother, aunt, niece, cousin, mother-in-law, friend, adopted mother, sister-in-law, and sister. She was also the neighborhood therapist, doctor, nurse, masseuse, pastor, and most importantly, the neighborhood coffee shop. If there are three things you would always get by Auntie Pearl was coffee, a good laugh, and lots of love. If what any one of you here have ever had the opportunity for her to rob you, then you will agree with me on this. She will have your ball in. <laughs> Bloody murder. But when she's done with you next day, good as new. Auntie Pearl spent most mornings in her gallery drinking coffee with Sheldon and greeting her neighbors on their way to work. You know, if you pass, and she in that gallery, and you don't call to her, it's war. She would laugh and talk to Bina, her husband and her kids, Leslie Ann, Summer, Laura and Miss Ann when she's here and love her. And by 5.30 p.m. every day, Auntie Mags and Miss Gale would be walking, laugh, would be laughing and talking, and most importantly, drinking coffee in the said gallery. And by 8 p.m., she either calling Mommy or Joy or both to tell them about everything that happened during the day. I am sure if they gave them a chance, they would talk for hours like they didn't talk the night before. Auntie Pearl loved dancing, singing, telling jokes, telling stories about a long time, but most importantly, she loved serving her maker. There was never a day she didn't pray, and mind you, she prayed for everybody. She had a way of giving you the sweetest buff, and I learned that the hard way, because tell me how I will, how I will ask my mother and my aunt if I could get a boyfriend. Let us just say, the only thing Pearl, we are at me, did not do was cuss me. And when she was done, she said, I didn't tell you all them things because I didn't love, didn't like you, you know. I told you that because I love you, and I want you to be somebody. Seeing that I was the last grandchild, I was Auntie Pearl and Grandma Baby. I used to sleep under Auntie Pearl. And when I say sleep, I mean sleep. I used to share a birthday cake with her because our birthday were only one day apart. For summer vacation, she would teach me all the sound of music songs. 
I remembered grandma and auntie clothes thought it was a great idea to buy him a first and last bike without my mother's knowledge. And all auntie Pearl said to me was, leave my child, she will ride in the yard. I remember us laughing until tears come out of our eyes, especially when she scaled the wall to go behind Gavin, and then she couldn't scale back. <laughs> I remember playing with the little mole behind her knee, and she saying, Celine, I will hit your child. I will forever cherish those memories. I remember when grandma died, you told us, now that grandma gone, all is my responsibility now. And she sure did live up to that statement. She was there for everything, even if it was just calling and finding out how it was. She made it her duty to be a part of everything. I remembered she was so excited when I called and after I got my CXC and CAPE results. She was even more excited when I told her I got into nursing school. She couldn't wait to see me in my uniform. <laughs> and don't worry, I would make her proud. And I'm speaking for everyone here when I say this. Auntie Polly left us very suddenly, with no explanation or reason. He left us heartbroken, teary eyes, and large voice, hard to fill. But I know you're happy and laughing with your Lord. I know Grandma, Albertina, Rosanna, and Mary are very happy to welcome you home. Auntie Paul Gill, you're finally reunited with your mother. And I know you are happy. But if I could ask for one last favor before I go, please have grandma and tell her we said hi. And people will love you and we will forever miss you. Until we meet again, I love you. Thank you. One of our friends who was unable to make it today requested um, this to be read. She is not going. Ease your grief, she is not going. For in your heart, she lingers on. Her smile, her laugh, her special ways will comfort you from day to day. You will feel her presence in the breeze that dances gently through the trees and her face that you will see. You are in need of company at any time you can recall the love you shared you saved it all and in time more than anything you will find peace in remembering we will now have the first reading from the book of from the prophet Isaiah on this mountain the Lord of hosts will prepare for all people a banquet of rich food on this mountain he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations he will destroy death forever the Lord God will wipe away the tears from every cheek he will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hope for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hope. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. For the responsorial psalm, we will sing together, The Lord is my shepherd. If I should ever walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear, you are dead to show the way. The Lord is my shepherd, he is Lord and I'm his guest. Fresh and green are the pastures where he leads me to my rest. Near peaceful waters he leads me to 
cheer up my jealous heart. He guides me on the sea path. He will always do his part. If I should ever walk in the valley of darkness, no evil word I fear. You are there to show the way. You prepare a banquet. In the sight of my foes, you cool my head with oil, and my cup now overflows. Surely goodness and kindness will be with me all the way. The Lord's house for my dwelling, I will thank him every day. If I should ever walk in the valley of darkness, no evil world I fear. You are there to show the way. Glory be to the Father. Glory to his only Son. Glory to the Spirit. Glory, glory, everyone. If I should ever walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there to show the way. If I should ever walk, in the valley of darkness, your crook and your staff, they will lead me through the day. Please stand. <coughs> alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. For you have the message of eternal life. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. But the man was anxious to justify himself and said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In answer, Jesus said, A man was once on his way down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of bandits. They stripped him, beat him, and then made off, leaving him half dead. Now a priest happened to be traveling down the same road. But when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. In the same way, a Levite who came to the place saw him 
and pass by on the other side. But a Samaritan traveler who came on him was moved with compassion when he saw him. He went up to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. He then lifted him onto his own mount and took him to an inn and looked after him. Next day he took out to the Nari and handed them to the innkeeper and said, Look after him. On my way back, I will make good any extra expense you have. Which of these three do you think proved himself a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands? The word of God is for each and every one of us who have come together here this afternoon. Because our sister has lived her life. Our sister lived her life as she would understand God in her life and live it pleasing according to God. It is for all of us in the midst of this grief and this sorrow that we gather here this afternoon. It is yet another privilege for us to look at our lives. Because it is always a reminder that all of you and myself one day to come, we shall follow suit on this path. None of us shall escape it. And so the word of God this evening from the Gospel of Luke sends yet another important message to us. Because we are living in a time and a place and in a space in this world at this present moment when we are all about ourselves. Everything is about me and I what I can accomplish for myself, what I can do to make only myself happy, how can I attain status so that I can look down on others and feel that I am higher than anyone. This reading from the Gospel of Luke this evening is for all of us. And so Jesus draws the example to the man who placed the question before him. And if we all read our Gospels regularly, we would always be reminded that questions was always placed to Jesus. To try to catch him in a corner where he would not be able to answer. But Jesus, for yet another time, answered the question, and who is my neighbor? Jesus gave three examples. And he said that this man was on his way down from Jerusalem to Jericho, minding his own business. And he fell into the hands of bandits. They beat him. They stripped him of everything. And they did not have a heart. They left him to die on the roadside. And there came a priest. And when the priest saw him, it is our understanding, as we would say locally, a man of the cloth who is trying to lead others to bring salvation onto their lives. When he sees someone in trouble, he would go to see what he can do to help that person in need. But the opposite happened. He passed by on the other side. So too was the Levite. He went about his merry way. But there was someone, the third example that Jesus used was a man who was not considered in society. Was a man and a people in those days who had to live on the fringes of society. Who could not mingle with the puppy boys and those of status at that time. And that was the Samaritan. And he was the man that was filled with compassion. And he went to the aid of that man who was beaten and left for dead on the roadside. And Jesus then turned to him and asked him, Of those three examples that I give to you, who would you say is your neighbor? And the man replied, The one who went to render assistance. And Jesus is asking all of us that this afternoon here. Because all of us, you know in Trinidad we don't say neighbor anymore. Look my dog and my horse. 
That is the new way of saying neighbor now. Hey dog, what you saying? That is how we consider one another. That is how we look at each other. That is how we allow our lives to be fashioned unto each other. And Jesus is calling us this evening to be in a place like the Samaritan man. You see, my dear brothers and sisters, we live a life where we take everything for granted. We live a life thinking that tomorrow belongs to us. And we're planning everything for tomorrow. And we're not in allowing God to be in the midst of what we are planning. Because we feel that tomorrow is ours. Well, sorry to say, for all of us, tomorrow belongs to God. Today belongs to God. Pearl belonged to God. And so it is, my dear brothers and sisters, there is a time in our lives when we need to wake up. There is a time in our lives when we need to put aside our ego that rules and controls us. There is a time when we have to understand that we are a son and a daughter of God. And we need to know that God is always molding us shaping us, filling us, and he wants to use us so that we would be able to draw others to come unto salvation in their lives. My dear brothers and sisters, look at the depth of love and compassion that the Samaritan man had. He bandaged the wound. He poured oil and wine on them. He took the man to the inn and he told the innkeeper that whatever expense extra you incur on my way back from where I am going, I would pay you. We are Trini, how many of us doing that? What would they say? Well, boy, I will see you tomorrow. And the next thing, the next time we might see you is like that. You know, recently, there was a man who was ill for quite some years. His son lived abroad. And every month, he is begging his son to come and see him. He can't get time off. He don't have time. And all the excuses in the world, for a couple of years, he made all the excuses. And the day the father died, he bought a ticket to come to the funeral. What sense, let's, let's be real, brothers and sisters, what sense that make? If you cannot come and see me and appreciate me when I am like, when I'm a shell in a box, what's the sense of that? We must not fool ourselves. We must not think that we can fool anybody because at the end of the day, it is only ourselves. So today is a wake-up call. Whilst we gather together in grief and in sorrow here, Look what Paul has allowed to happen to us. God's word being proclaimed unto each and every one of us. That we can look at our lives. We can pattern our lives like the good Samaritan. We can truly see each other as a son and as a daughter of God. There are many people around us who are crying out for help. They are in trouble. We are seeing more and more of our young people falling on the wayside. And all we do is complain. We're blaming somebody else when something happens. And we are not using that energy and that space and that time to bend our knees and to allow God to take control. We always say when they do something wrong, is somebody else encourage them. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, God gave everybody wisdom and knowledge. And God expects us as the elders in society to be a good neighbor like the Samaritan, to have a watchful eyes for one another, to be there when we see people's life in darkness, in the dungeons to help them push out our hands and pull them out and bring them out from darkness into light. Let us not be a selfish people, but let us be selfless. Let us be there to help one another. 
I last saw Pearl about a month ago. I officiated at a funeral at St. Francis Church, and I remember the deceased. His name was Timothy Bessessa Singh from Guayco. And after the funeral service, Pearl, in her usual way, will come and hug me up, and we will chit chat for a bit. She was very jolly, same smile. I don't ever know when Pearl Vex or she Vex, because she always smiling. And we chatted for a while. And then the next thing I heard a couple days ago that Pearl had died. And just like you, the family, and all of us gather here, I am human too, I grieve. Because I knew her for many years. I know that family from Oropoot from a little boy growing up. And we always kept in touch, even though we don't see for a period of time. But when we see, it's like no days we're lost. Because it's the same one love. One love. And so today as we come together, we thank God for her life. We thank God for the good Samaritan that she was in her life. Surely she would have been able to take people out of their darkness and bring light onto them. Surely she would have been there as we always heard. You could have sure to gotten three things when you go by her. And when you can be a neighbor like that onto each other, then we can say we are living in a better place. So today, brothers and sisters, as we come together and we say farewell to her mortal remains, we trust on the words from the Holy Scriptures that in my Father's house there are many rooms through which we can all enter. And that is the great promise that God gave to all of us. But it doesn't happen just so. We have to work to achieve and to accomplish that place that God has prepared for us. Because you see, brothers and sisters, sometimes we think it's like a daylight dream. We can just suddenly wake up one morning and say, well, I know God now. But it's not like that. I always remind people, walking in the steps to bring salvation onto our lives is like a child starting preschool. And you move from one step to another. And as you grow daily, and you seek the divine intervention and the presence of God's Holy Spirit in your lives, God will well up within each and every one of us a new understanding of the presence of the power of his love. And so as we grow day after day in the Spirit of God, we shall truly recognize, identify, and see a new revelation before us every day as God promises us an eternal place for each and every one of us. Remember, God says, judge not, because you yourselves are to be judged. So we thank God for the life of Pearl. Beautiful woman, wonderful life, hard worker, friendly person, neighborly person, touching the hearts and the lives of many throughout life's journey. And for her son and other members of the family, all of you who grieve today, Jesus will bring healing onto your lives. And Jesus will continue to allow you to let his light shine upon you. May God in his goodness, his mercy, his love and compassion continue to be with each and every one of us now and forever. Amen.
Elsa, a pleasant good afternoon to the Berry family, to the pastor, and to the congregation. Auntie Pearl, um, every time she came by, Auntie Jo, she used to come across and look for us. And I just want to bless God for his inspiration in our life. She was really a good soul. I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said he will not suffer thy foot thy foot to be moved, the Lord which keepeth thee, he will not slumber nor sleep, for the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy strength upon thy right hand upon thy right hand for the sun shall not smite thee by day not a moon by night he shall preserve your soul even forevermore. Oh, my hands, my hands, and my hands, all of my help come from the of my eyes to the hills from when come at my help my help come from the Lord the Lord which made heaven and earth and he said he will not suffer thy foot thy foot to be moved the Lord which keepeth thee, he will not slumber nor sleep. And for the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy help upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. And for the sun shall not smite thee by day, not a moon by night, and he shall preserve our souls, and even forevermore. Oh, and my help, and my all stand please God the Almighty Father raise Christ his son from the dead with confidence we ask him to save all his people living and dead 
For Pearl, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, Lord, hear us. For our sister who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day, Lord, hear us. For all our deceased relatives and friends and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, Lord, hear us. For all those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, Lord, hear us. For you, the family and friends of our sister Pearl, that you may be consoled in your grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister Pearl. Cleanse her of her sins and grant her the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And so let us all together pray the prayer that Jesus taught and prayed with his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. We take all our prayers, our petitions, our intercessions, we put them into the hands of our Blessed Mother. We ask our Blessed Mother to intercede in all our prayer before God, our Heavenly Father, as we pray together. Hail Mary. <clears throat> the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we have come to the final commendation. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our fear well express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquer all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Pearl in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessing which you bestowed upon Pearl in this life, for they are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever and ever. <coughs> we gather here to commend our sister Pearl to God our Father and to commit her body to the earth. In the spirit of faith and the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, let us offer our prayers for Pearl. Because God has chosen to call Pearl from this life to himself, we commit her body to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall all return. <coughs> I will go and bless the mortal remains once again with holy water, and then I will place some earth on the coffin. And whilst I am doing this, we will sing together into your hands.
Anda kacau. From every voice. We'll worship you. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory. For he has risen the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our sister to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her in peace and raise her body on the last day. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, we have come to the end of our service. Let us bow our heads for the final prayer. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May she rest in peace. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. And may the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep all your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pearl, may the angels lead you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and lead you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is born no longer, may you find eternal rest. Amen. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon us all and remain with us forever and ever. Amen. And so, um, just a little announcement. They are asking to